What's up everybody? Today I'm going to show you the process I used to build my fishing rod. Then I'm going to take this thing out and test it on some fish. Keep in mind that this is not a tutorial, this is just showing you what I did to build mine. I do have all the footage I would need to make a tutorial, so if enough of you are interested, I would be happy to make a full tutorial. Just let me know in the comments what you think. So this is all the supplies I'm using. I'm building a 6'6 six six ultralight rod. I had to go with two piece because they were out of one piece. We've got the grips here, the reel seat, the winding checks, and the guides. So the first step was to locate the spine of the rod. To do that, I rolled that between my hands and then marked it with the tape. I could feel the rod snap into place, and that's how you know what the spine is. The rod is only supposed to bend one way, so it's important to find the spine. The next step is to get the fighting butt to fit on the rod. It just needs to go right on the end. So what I had to do is use a rasp to ream that out to make sure it's the right diameter. So as you can see, that's a nice snug fit now, right on the end of the rod. Next, I marked the blank where I'm gonna put my grips. I measured up eight inches. That's where the reel seat is going to be. So the rear grip will be just below that. So the rear grip I chose out, this is actually for a casting rod, so it has this extra tenon that I don't need, so I'm just going to cut that off with a razor blade. I just like the looks of this one, so that's what I went with. So I just carefully cut that straight across, so it would fit a spinning rod. And the next step was to ream that out as well, so I just did the same thing as I did with the butt cap. You can see that the opening is a lot bigger now, and I reamed that out so it'll fit just where I put that mark. And now I needed to ream out the foregrip that will go above the rail seat, so I put the rail seat onto the rear grip. And then I need to ream that out so it'll sit right on top of the rail seat. So there we go, that's a perfect fit. Next I did some prep work and just taped off some of my components so they wouldn't get covered in epoxy when I glued them to the rod. Then I put my winding checks on, so I wouldn't forget about those. These just create a nice seamless transition between the grip and the rod. And now I mix the two part epoxy. So I just take one half of part A, one half part B, and then just mix those together till they were a nice uniform color. The first thing I'm gonna glue to the rod is the fighting butt. So I just smeared some of the epoxy right there on the butt. And then I just slowly turned that fighting butt down to the end of the rod. I used a twisting motion to make sure I got enough epoxy under that. Then I used one of my mixing sticks to remove the excess epoxy. So I took that excess epoxy and just put it into the butt cap. This goes on the end of the fighting butt so that we don't have an exposed blank. So I just smeared that in there and twisted it into place. Next I took a paper towel with some isopropyl alcohol to clean the excess glue off. Then I took a little bit of the epoxy and put it right on top of that grip for the winding check to press that into place. The next step was to glue on the rear grip, so I just smeared some epoxy on the blank again. And then twisted that down into place slowly, making sure to work that around so that the epoxy got underneath the grip. And once I got that where I wanted it, I removed the tape. That kept a lot of the epoxy from getting onto that grip, so I would have only a little bit of cleanup work later. And then there was just enough for the winding check, so I just pressed that on there and then cleaned it up again. The next step was to create some masking tape arbors because the real seat does not sit flat on the blank. It's way too big of a diameter. So I had to make some arbors so that it will sit flat. So I just put enough tape to get a snug fit there then I put another arbor up at the top of the seat. And then I made one more, right in between. So all those should be the exact same thickness. Now the real seat will sit perfectly center and flush on the blank. So I added a little extra tape to protect the rear grip. Then I applied my epoxy liberally to the blank and the arbors, getting it in between everything. Then I slowly twisted the real seat into place backtracking a little bit to make sure the epoxy got all the way under there. Use my mixing stick to remove the excess before pressing it against the grip. Press it the rest of the way. And then remove the tape. And as you can see, there's only a little bit to remove, so I used my paper towel with alcohol to remove that. And then I lined up the real seat so that it would be in line with the guides and the spine. 
Once that was right where I wanted it, I moved on to the foregrip. So I just applied the epoxy the same way, twisted that into place, removed the tape, and then there was only a little cleanup work to do with the paper towel and alcohol. Next is just one more winding check. So I put a little bit of glue, slid that winding check into place, and pressed it up against that foregrip. Then clean it up with the paper towel and alcohol. And there is the completed grip. After that epoxy dried, I moved on to the hook keeper. So you can see that I taped that into place, leaving a little exposed. The reason I leave some exposed is because I'm using thread to connect this. So I tie over the end, and once the thread is holding it down, I removed the tape. And you can see that's a nice little band of thread holding that on. So I just had to do that with the other side. And you'll notice that I use my bobbin, just like when I'm tying my jigs and flies. You're supposed to use a threading tool, but that was really expensive, and I thought, why not just use the bobbin? And as you can see, I got a nice result. The next step, and probably my favorite, was to write my logo on there. So I'm just writing mustache and cursive. It took me a few tries, but it's okay. You can just wipe it off with a paper towel and alcohol, and try again if you mess up. I just used a speedball pen with some ink that it came with. It was a little bit difficult at first to learn how to write on a rod blank rather than a flat surface, but I got the hang of it after a few tries and got this nice result that I was happy with. And I added an extra decorative wrap of thread to make that logo look nice and centered. And next I marked all the locations where my guides will go. The rod came with a nice guide sheet, so I just followed that. Then I taped my bottom guide to the rod, the first one that I was going to attach, and just wrapped that on with my thread. I removed the tape and then I just kept wrapping that, secured the thread, and cut that off. And as you can see, it created a nice thread wrap. Then I added a couple bands of white and black just to give that a cool decorative look. This is something I always wanted to try. Then I just continued to wrap all the guides to the rod right where I marked them. It took quite a while to do this with a bobbin, but it was actually pretty fun and it worked out well. I had about 10 guides to do, so I'm just showing you a few. The next step was to attach the tip top of the rod. So to do that, I took some hot hide glue, shoved it up in there, heated it up with a lighter, and then just pressed that in place on the rod tip, and twisted that until it was right in line with the guides and it was a perfect fit. Here's a cool cinematic shot of all the guides on the rod, ready for finish. The next step was to put finish on the guides, so I have my rod on a rod dryer that spins it at about 9 RPM, and this just makes sure the self-leveling finish just has a nice even layer. So I just saturated that with the finish to cover all the thread. I'm gonna do a few coats of that. So as you can see, that creates a nice guide that's held on to the rod for the rest of the rod's life. And this is the rod wrapping I put over where the two pieces of the rod connect. So I just put finish on that as well. I applied enough finish until it dripped, and then I just removed the excess drip with the paintbrush, and that created a perfect level finish that saturated the thread. So I just continued that same method of the rest of the guides applying too much, and then just removing the excess. This is the second coat that I put on the hook keeper. And this is the third coat. So you can just see what it looks like when I put it over the coat before. And with these coats, I overlapped and went over the end of the thread onto the rod blank so that the thread is completely sealed on there. With the higher up guides that are a lot smaller, it was a bit more difficult to keep it stable. But as you can see, I got the job done. And there it is. I applied three coats total, and you can see that there's a nice level finish. So this is the completed rod. All in all, it was a really cool process building this. I really like how it turned out. You can see those guides are on there, they're perfectly straight, and they're cemented on there forever. Alright, let's go fishing. So I started out with the mustache minnow of course, and this is a 1 ounce jig, so I was hoping the rod would cast it. I'm using 4 pound fluorocarbon, 
and the rod casted it perfectly. It went really far and I was just happy with how it felt. So I just jigged that along and caught a fish. I noticed that the rod was really sensitive, which I was really happy with. I could feel every little tug and head shake. Really nice fish, almost a pound. Just a slab on the mustache minnow. Look at him, he choked that thing. Then I released him to fight another day. So next I threw out one of my jigs under a bobber and you can see that I hooked another nice crappie. I did notice that the rod was not super bendy. It didn't bend nearly as much as any other ultralight I've ever fished. It's more of a light action, but it's not too bad at all. With the sensitivity and how far it can cast a 132nd ounce jig, I had no complaints. Look at that nice thick crappie. Beautiful fish. I ended up catching about 8 or 9 crappie this size. I just wanted to show you a couple to see how the rod would do. Again, if you want to see a full tutorial on how I built the rod, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this one, and if you enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.